Hello everyone, Sergeant Urgerwood here, and today I'm going to react to The Road to Rome, Cannibal Part 1, the Second Punic War. Punic Wars, just for some background information, were a series of wars fought between Carthage and Rome. And yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. It's by History Marsh. I think we've only reacted to them once before, but I could be wrong. Yeah, one of you guys recommended that I watch this, so yeah, I'm going to definitely watch this. It seems interesting. Without further ado, let's get started. What the heck? Oh, that's a quote right there. The result of the war in Sicily had not broken the spirit of that commander. He regarded himself as unconquered. Oh, yes. After General Hasdrubal the Fair was assassinated by a Celtic slave, 26-year-old Hannibal was elected as the new Carthaginian commander. The young general immediately made plans to invade Rome. Dang, you're just jum jumping straight. But he couldn't begin the campaign before strengthening Carthage's control over the Iberian Peninsula. So Hannibal went to work. He launched two highly successful... Yeah, by the way, for more background information, in the last war, because it's the second Punic War, in the last Punic War, the first, the, or the first Punic War, I mean, the one before this one, Carthage actually lost, and they lost, like, Sicily and some other land. ...successful campaigns in 221 and 220 BC, extending Carthaginian influence beyond Whoa. the Tagus River. Look at that. But while on the return route to New Carthage, Hannibal was taken by surprise by a coalition of Iberian tribes. Led by the Carpatani tribe, the Iberians assembled a large army. They blocked Hannibal's path and fortified their position against Rude. the Tagus River, then waited for the Carthaginian general to attack. Here, Hannibal showed his military genius for the first time. Instead of attacking the Iberians head-on, he erected his own fortified camp and waited. By day's end, his scouts found a river crossing to the southeast. During the wee hours of the night, Hannibal ordered a, the wee hours of the night. a small contingent to stay in the camp and keep all the campfires burning, creating the illusion that the whole Carthaginian oh. army was still encamped. While he led his army on a swift flanking maneuver further up the river. By sunrise the next day, Hannibal was behind the Iberian position, oh leaning retreat towards New Carthage. Thinking that the Carthaginians were retreating, Iberians rushed to intercept them. But once they were midstream, Hannibal sprung his trap and unleashed his cavalry. Hey, what, are they swimming in the river or what the heck? Iberian infantrymen, chest deep in the fast flowing oh river, gosh. couldn't offer much resistance and were cut down with ease by the Carthaginian cavalry charge. Dang. Those who managed to cross were trampled by the elephant. By now, I'm so confused. So they're like in the river? No, oh, the Iberian army lost all cohesion, and the mass of tribal warriors started fleeing. Hannibal ordered his army to pursue them across the river, completely routing the enemy. On the Tagus River, Hannibal had his first major victory. Look how small Rome looks. But Rome took notice. Wanting to stop Hannibal's expansion, the Romans made their presence felt. Already allied with the wealthy and powerful city of Saguntum, Rome declared it their protectorate, an act that Hannibal perceived as a violation of the treaty signed by the two great powers in 225 BC, which divided the Iberian Peninsula along the Ebro River into Carthaginian and Roman spheres of influence. A sworn enemy of Rome, 
didn't take long before Hannibal acted. Dang. He marched on Saguntum and besieged the city. In 219 <laughs> BC, Carthaginian army reached the outskirts of Saguntum. The city was heavily fortified, situated atop steep slopes and cliffs high above the surrounding plain. Saguntines wow. requested aid from Rome. But the Romans were busy fighting the Illyrians. Nevertheless, with oh, provisions no. stockpiled, Saguntum they are, was prepared. They better surrender. Besieging it would not be easy. Hannibal installed a blockade around the entire city and mm. placed most of his force at the western end. Saguntines stubbornly kept pushing every Carthaginian assault back. But the siege went on for months, and the months? many assaults oh, gradually wore down oh. portions of the wall. Eventually, the defenders uh -oh. had to abandon their outer defences and form up behind the inner wall. Slowly and relentlessly, Hannibal's army made progress. And after eight brutal months, the Saguntines made their last stand at the citadel. So interesting looking at this. Soon after, the city fell. Oh no. Inhabitants that survived the siege were either killed or sold into slavery. After the fall of Saguntum, Rome demanded justice for what they perceived was the violation of the treaty and, claiming that Saguntum was in the Roman sphere of influence, according to the treaty, they asked Carthage to hand over Hannibal to Rome so he could be punished. But the Carthaginian Senate stood by their general, and by the end of the year, the Second Punic War began. Wait, was that the intro? Hannibal wintered in New Carthage, preparing for the upcoming campaign. He placed his brother, Hasdrubal, in charge of Iberia, with 15,000 troops and 21 elephants, along with a fleet of ships to protect the coastline. To break possible tribal allegiances, around 15,000 Iberian infantry were swapped for 15,000 African infantry. bolstered defences against a possible Roman landing. And in the spring of 218 BC, with the full support from the Senate, Hannibal marched out of New Carthage with 54,000 infantry and 8,000 cavalry, dividing his army Whoa. into three columns. At the time, like, right now, that may not seem like a lot of people, but apparently back then, that is supposed to be a ton of troops. Especially for 200 BC. But beyond the Ebro, tribes allied to Rome were hostile to the Carthaginians, and it took Hannibal Ooh. about two months to pacify the region. He placed around 10,000 troops months. under the command of Hanno, ordering him to establish a line of defense on the Ebro against possible incursions into Carthaginian territory. With 38,000 infantry, 7,000 37 elephants left at his disposal, Hannibal crossed the mountains and encamped on the other side of the Pyrenees. Meanwhile, the Romans divided their forces. Their plan was to send Consul Publius Cornelius Scipio to intercept Hannibal in Iberia. Simultaneously, Consul Tiberius Sempronius Longus sailed to Sicily. That is a long name, jeez. With the intent of attacking Carthage itself. If wow. Scipio managed to stop Hannibal's advance. Additional Roman forces were left to guard the recently conquered Gallic lands in the Po Valley, a region the Romans called Cisalpine Gaul. Back at the foot of the Pyrenees Mountains, Hannibal laid the groundwork for the invasion. Rather than fight... Yeah, there's no way um, Scipio's horse can stop the Carthaginians. ...to his way towards Rome. He did everything to avoid conflict with the Gallic tribes, mostly paying them for free passage through their territory, promising that his only interest is to fight Rome. Moreover, Carthaginian messengers returning from the Po Valley assured Hannibal that the Gallic tribes there would welcome him, and that they already began hostilities against Rome in anticipation of his arrival. This was welcomed news for Hannibal, 
because he knew the Po Valley could provide the manpower and act as a staging point for operations into Roman territory. Like, everything is falling into, the, into Carthage's hands right now. As Hannibal approached the River Rome, Scipio's army disembarked at Massalia to resupply while on their way to Iberia. The Roman general knew that Hannibal crossed the Pyrenees, but he wrongly estimated that the Carthaginian general was still far from the Rome. In truth, Hannibal's army was only four days' march away from Massalia. They're barely going to have time to prepare. Hannibal rested his army for three days in hostile territory and began preparations to cross the Rhone. With the Roman army just four days away, Hannibal wanted to avoid a set-piece battle with the Gauls, eager to press on towards the Italian peninsula as soon as possible. But on the opposite riverbank, encamped was the army of the Caveris tribe, a Roman ally. Uh-oh. They gathered all their boats and built a barrier on the riverbank in preparation to contest the Carthaginian crossing. Oh, wow. But Hannibal devised a cunning plan. On the third night, under the cover of darkness, he sends a flanking detachment under the command of Hanno, son of Bomlicar, some 40 kilometers, 25 miles, North. Hanno crossed the river and rested his troops for one day. On the second night after leaving the Carthaginian camp, Hanno's detachment again moved during the night, eventually deploying behind the Caveras camp at dawn. The trap was set. Oh. This is like the second time he's done this sort of thing. It's just like distracted them and then flanked them on the back. Early next morning, Hanno used smoke to signal Hannibal to start crossing the road. As the Carthaginian vessels were lowered into the massive river, the Caveras army formed a line on the opposite bank. was one of the first to cross. To the roars and cheers of his men on the western bank. As the Carthaginians started disembarking on the eastern riverbank, Hanno sent a part of his force to loot and destroy the Caveras camp. Wow. While he proceeded to charge at the Gauls. Well, you would think that they would leave. I don't know. Some people there. Gauls near the river. The Caveras were stunned by the flanking maneuver. They began fleeing the field in panic. Unable to cope uh -oh. with Hannibal's perfectly synchronized attacks. Wow. With the Gauls scattered, the battle was soon over. The Carthaginians hastily proceeded to cross the river. Wow, that was decisive to me. Most of Hannibal's troops crossed the road by the end of the day. While well, it took another day to get the elephants across the river. While the Carthaginian army gathered on the eastern bank, friendly Gallic messengers from the tribes in the Po Valley arrived, warning Hannibal that a Roman fleet is anchored nearby. Hannibal sent his scouts to locate Scipio's army, and incredibly, not long after, his Numidian scouts stumbled into a Roman Gallic scouting party. Oh my gosh. Both generals now knew each other's whereabouts. Scipio quickly moved north to confront Hannibal, but by the time the Romans reached the crossing point a few days later, only an empty Carthaginian camp was left behind. Hannibal had no time to waste. He had to reach the Alps before winter. But as Hannibal's army began their journey over the Alps, trouble was brewing in Iberia. Scipio placed his brother Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio Calvus in charge of leading the army into Iberia while well, he headed back to the Po Valley to assume command of the Roman troops there and prepare for the Carthaginian invasion. Scipio Calvus, now in charge of the invasion force, disembarked at Emporiae. The Greek trading cities and the Iberian tribes in the region welcomed the Romans. But even prior to the arrival of Roman troops, the Carthaginians began to lose control over the conquered region as Hanno's force was not large enough to conduct offensive operations. 
What's worse, Hanno only learned about the Roman arrival and Scipio Calvus was well on his way towards the Ebro River. He sent word to Hasdrubal, who began marching north with 8,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry. But instead of waiting for Hasdrubal, Hanno marched out with 10,000 troops to meet the 20,000 strong Roman army. Unsurprisingly, Scipio Calvus easily crushed the Carthaginians, killing yeah. 6,000 and capturing 2,000 troops oh, along wow. with Hanno himself. Once Hasdrubal arrived, he didn't have enough troops to meet the Romans in battle, so he launched fast moving. Yeah, but the, I don't remember them like two to one. Looks, oh, they have a lot of cavalry. Maybe that's why. Raids along the coast. Carthaginian raiders killed many Roman sailors as they were foraging, reducing the effectiveness of the Roman fleet by half. Nevertheless, Rome now had full control over Iberia north of the Ebro River, a serious oh, blow no. to the Carthaginian war effort. Moreover, northern Iberia would become a base of operations for Roman incursions into Carthaginian territory south of the Ebro River. Meanwhile, having marched his forces over the Alps, Hannibal would soon turn the Italian peninsula into a war zone, in a campaign that would elevate him to a general of legendary status. Well, there we go, everyone. That is the episode. Wow. Hannibal is apparently really good, because he just destroyed two armies. Wow. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out the next episode, and goodbye. Hello everyone, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And, you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh so yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm all right, I go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, at them, if not better, than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know or I have in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.